Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're doing a head to head to head competition between the Fat Stack 120, the Franklin Pit, and the Workhorse 1975. For this competition, we are cooking St. Louis cut spare ribs, and we're seasoning with just salt and pepper. We're going to hold the temperature at 250 degrees on all three smokers, and we're using white oak on all three. We're trying to make this as fair as possible and as simple as possible because we want to really see what these cookers do, how well they cook how easy they are to use, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on each one as we go through the cook. So let's get them prepped. Hey guys, I want to thank today's sponsor, Noom. Noom isn't a diet, it's not a restrictive list of foods, but it's a program that helps you understand the decisions you make, and they use the tools of psychology to help you understand how to get yourself healthy and achieve your goals. I've been using Noom for about the past month, and it connects to my fitness tracker, so it tracks my steps, it tracks my calories, and it makes it super easy to achieve the goals that I want, and even more importantly, it helps me understand things that I would do in the past that would kind of ruin any other diet. So now I understand why I might eat a pint of Ben & Jerry's ice cream and ruin all the work that I'd put in by getting on the treadmill or going to the gym. The way Noom works is you express your goals, they develop an individualized program for you, and then you can find out how you can achieve your goals by changing your behavior and changing how you do things. That's way more important than just getting a list of foods to eat. In addition to that, it educates you about foods that are not very calorie dense, so you can eat and not be consuming a ton of calories. With Noom, I weigh less than I have in two years. It's the first time I've approached 200 pounds. When you have questions, you can communicate directly with your coach to help answer those questions and get you on track. And using it couldn't really be much easier. You just click this little icon and boom, you see all of your stats for the day. And there's constant education to help you understand how what you do affects how you achieve your goals. If Noom interests you, go to noom.com forward slash madbbq to take a free 30 second quiz. Noom isn't just about teaching you better foods, it's about making a better you. And that's gonna have long-term consequences to help you achieve your goals, not for just a short period of time, but for the long haul. So that's noom.com forward slash madbbq. I really encourage you to try it. It's been a couple of hours at this point, and so we're just gonna check in on these ribs. Now for the 1975, we have an extra rack of ribs in there because we had four racks, and so we thought if we're cooking anyway. So we're cooking those as well, we used a different rub, but that's not the subject of the test. So let's take a look. Looking good, let's check the Franklin. Starting to get good color. Let's check the fat stack. This one might be the darkest so far. I just want to take a minute to give you my subjective impressions of using these three cookers, and that might help you get a better understanding of which one might be right for you. Behind me here, the Workhorse 1975 is a tremendous smoker. Now, I've been waiting to make content with this for a while. I've been using it, been testing it, been really trying to figure out how well it works, but it's really, really good. Now, the reason I have one right now is because one of my subscribers, Jason Spay, bought it and had it sent to me to use to make some videos. So thank you very much to him. He's gonna show up later and eat these ribs with me. But I was waiting to make content so I could order one myself first because I didn't want to rave about this thing and then be further back in line. I hope you guys forgive me, but it's very, very good. So look for the full review of this in the future. Now, a couple things. This trailer is awesome, makes it super easy to move around. Uh, it's kind of a smaller trailer, so when you're actually towing it for a long period of time, it's kind of a little bumpy, but any smoker in the future that I get that's this size, 
I'm gonna put on a trailer. It's just so convenient. Three eighths inch thick steel. This thing is an absolute beast and it's got great draw. So you will probably use that damper at certain points when you're cooking on this thing. So my thoughts, very easy to use, runs like a big offset. It's kind of the same way the fat stack runs like a big offset and the Franklin runs like a big offset. In comparison to other backyard size smokers, they just work with you instead of against you. So this test is really the cream of the crop. And we're gonna find out if there's a, an appreciable difference in how they cook. But one thing I can say about this is the amount of space you have on here is awesome. You could probably do four or five briskets on this thing. I mean, the top rack is obviously gonna be a lot hotter, but you can access everything in there. Super awesome. Have had a great experience so far. I commend it to you, so check it out. And the price is expensive, but when you compare it to other things of similar quality, it's really very fair. Next up, we have the Franklin. Now. This was my favorite backyard pit I'd ever cooked on, and it is still extremely good. The only issue is you don't have a lot of space. And if you compare it to these other two smokers, it's the only one with a 20 inch diameter tank here. So the workhorse pits, 24 inch diameter pipe, the fat stack is 24 inch diameter tank, and this one's just smaller, which means that it can be given to greater temperature fluctuations, I think. Um, and the fire management is maybe a little less forgiving because on the bigger smokers, you don't have to be so precise in managing the fire and you don't have to worry about big temperature swings. This thing can have kind of a runaway effect. So if you just put too much fuel in there, this thing will get really hot. Now, the way it operates, it kind of protects it because that heat goes up and the meat you're cooking on the bottom rack, you know, is, is pretty safe, but it can still burn. Another issue is that there's no damper for the stack and you can never really have total control of the air intake either. It's just meant to have one speed basically and just run. So if you're mindful of that, you can make tremendously good food on this thing. It is a great smoker. Now, do I like the 24 inch diameter cook chamber more? Yeah, but it's not to say that there's anything wrong with this thing. This is great. So we're not gonna really have a great idea of the differences in cooking qualities until we taste these ribs at the end. Finally, the fat stack. So 24 inch diameter tank and you know, big collector, damper for the stack. I just really like it. It's got a nice big firebox. You can build the fire. The bottom is semi-insulated, so you really have a nice hot coal bed that wants to burn up the new fuel that you put on there. It's a tremendous cooker, and so far it's been my favorite backyard cooker I've ever used. But after getting the 1975, it's like, mm, is it 1A and 1B? I think I prefer this. It's got even more space, and you have even more flexibility with the fire. It doesn't draw quite as much as the 1975, but it all comes down to preference. Do you like the look of this one better? Do you like the look of that one better? Do you think you're gonna want something that can cook more food? Do you think I'm never gonna cook more than one brisket at a time? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself when you're choosing which smoker to buy. Now, these are all great pits. I can recommend them to you wholeheartedly. You can make incredible food. They all work with you instead of against you, but really, when we're comparing like a Lamborghini and a Ferrari and a Porsche, that's kind of what this is. It's a preference thing. Now, some people are like, well, Porsches are the best. And some people say, no, Lamborghinis are the best. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about backyard smokers of this class. Now, they're gonna cost you, um, some a little bit more than others, but they're all the top of the line. And so this is a really cool kind of, kind of like if it were cars, it would be like a drag race between the three. So cooking these ribs, we're gonna check in again just before we wrap to see what they look like but we're gonna stay the course 250 degrees. We're gonna be burning oak, everything like normal. One other note, the 1975 is the version that comes on a trailer. Uh, I think they have some that come on casters, I'm not exactly sure. And on the trailer, it is super easy to move in comparison to these smokers on casters. Now, both of these are super heavy and you gotta give them some elbow grease to get them to move where you want them to, but that's something to keep in mind as well. So if you're gonna have a smoker that you leave in one place forever, yeah, you can get it on casters. If you think you might move it with any degree of regularity, you can have it on the trailer. It's really easy. And then you can tow it behind your truck and go wherever you need to go and cook for whomever. So that's a really cool feature, I think. After about four hours, it is time to wrap. So we got beautiful color here. The fat's actually starting to render a little bit on the outside. It's nice and juicy, exactly what we want. Let's wrap them up, get them tender. Now that they're wrapped, we're gonna go 285, 300, just to get these things finished off.
All right, these ribs are finished up. We got them on the cutting board. And so to help me do this taste test between the 1975, the Franklin, and the Fat Stack is Jason Spay. He's the owner of the 1975, and I want to say thank you so much for letting me use it. It has been a privilege and a pleasure. Excited to be here. <laughs> Great. All right, you may be asking yourself, why am I blindfolded? It's because I'm gonna do a blind taste test and I'll give you my honest opinions. And then Jason's gonna do the taste test with me. Jason, you gonna wear a blindfold? I'll close my eyes. Okay, all right, so Erica, my wife, is gonna give me each sample and we're gonna try them together and we're gonna give our thoughts. Sample one. It smells really good. Smoky, no off flavors. Meat flavor shines through still. It's this is a really good rib. What do you think, Jason? I would agree. Criticisms? I have none. Yeah, I don't really either. Tender, juicy, smoky, a very good rib. It smells slightly different, I think. Also very good. I think the outside is maybe a little more dried out. I was gonna say a little chewier. Yeah. I don't think the smoke flavor is quite as strong. And it's very, very good. Like if I had these anywhere, I'd be like, these are great. But if we're trying to split hairs here, I think, I think maybe just a little less flavor, but still really good. Definitely. Wait, All right. Hold out your hands for the third I'm ready. sample. I'm making rustling sounds all over the board so you don't <laughs> know what I'm doing. Okay. No, uh, I don't have echolocation. Hmm. This definitely has more smoky flavor than mm -hmm. the second one. I put this one like with the first one, where it has like that smoke flavor, you know, more up front. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't get the same like dried out, like a little dry on the surface. It's not dried out, it's like a juicy rib that the second one was. But I just felt like the outside had dried out a little bit. This is a really good rib. Mm, that was good. Which one was your favorite? One, two, or three? One and three were so close. Of both of them. Yeah, I mean, they're so good. Both of them were great. I'd be hard pressed to distinguish between the two. If I'm guessing which one was which, I'm gonna go ahead and guess. Okay. Was the second one the Franklin one? Yes. Because we have two similar smokers, right? Bigger fireboxes, we can burn bigger splits of wood in there. And then between one and three, do you have a guess for one? Do you know if you liked one of them better than the other, or was it just too close to call? Between one and three? Yeah. It'd be too close for me to call. I would agree. I'm gonna guess three was workhorse, and one was... Fat stack? Fat stack. I'm gonna guess one was workhorse, oh. and three was fat stack. I, if, if I remember, this is kind of cheating though, the fat stack ribs looked a little darker, and I tasted maybe a little more of that darker browned meat taste. So I think the third one was fat stack, but that's just because I saw the rack of ribs. One was workhorse. Oh! Number two was fat oh. stack. Number three. Fat sack. Still got it. <laughs> Dude, these were great ribs. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna send you home with a brisket. What's the first thing you're gonna cook though? You're gonna cook a brisket first? That's a no. big task. You're gonna do what? Ribs, pork butt? What? Um, probably some chicken thighs just oh, to get. smart. Well, you know you got a great rib cooker right there. Yeah. You just proved that. Even like even number two was still great, I thought. That's better than I've had in many, many, many restaurants. Anything about this surprise you? How close the two were. Yeah. I it thought was, there'd be something. I couldn't really distinguish. Like I was grasping at straws to try to guess like, well, it could have been this, maybe. You know, but my palate is not that sophisticated. It's like, this one is great. This one kind of tastes the same. <laughs> this one's also great. Now those are our thoughts. This isn't the last word on any kind of comparison between these smokers, or actually among these smokers. I used to teach English. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is our experience on one day with one pile of wood and one set of meat. So you could get different experiences on different days, right? So 
take this for what it's worth. It's just our experience right here today. Now, if you enjoyed the video, you can hit the like button down below and you can leave a comment and let us know what you think about these different smokers. And also, I would ask you to leave a comment for Jason telling him thank you, because I say to him, thank you so much, man. Because if you hadn't done this, I wouldn't know how awesome this pit is and I wouldn't have gotten to make this content. So I appreciate him very much and leave some appreciation for him in the comments there. You can subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. And finally, you could be like Jason and be on Patreon and then we can communicate on Discord and it's just really awesome. And we give away things like a Franklin smoker and we just gave away a fat stack smoker. So it's worth your while to get on there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.